This video is designed to help you start a quarry business. At the end of the video, you'll find a valuable gift. It's a quarry business plan that you can download and will lay down for you, step by step, everything you need to know to start a successful quarry business of your own. If you are new to this channel, make sure to hit the subscribe button for more videos like this. Quarrying for sand and gravel may not be as exciting as other businesses, but it is still very profitable. Both materials are in huge demand for construction purposes, and supplying large amounts can earn you a large pile of money. Broadly speaking, quarried materials include sand, gravel, clay, dimensional stone and crushed stone, the latter of which is estimated to hold a significant share of the total market revenue. These materials are used directly in construction, and are also key ingredients for manufactured building materials, such as asphalt and cement, making them an integral component in the construction of our roads and buildings. To create one kilometer of road 10 meters wide, for example, could use over 500 loads of crushed stone from Volvo CE's rigid hauler. Quarries have been around since ancient times, and we still use them to meet the demands of natural resources like limestone, granite, and more. In the past, quarrying just required you to dig to get started. However, modern quarries are much more demanding. If you are entering the quarrying business, here's how you can properly start one, make the plans. When you decide to open a quarry, you can't pick a spot and dig. There are several factors to consider, even before the first bulldozer breaks the ground. The first thing you have to determine is where exactly your quarry is going to be. Depending on the sort of stone you are planning to excavate, this can limit your options. Next, you should look into the local laws and regulations about quarrying. A quarry can severely damage the local ecosystem, if it doesn't follow the environmental regulations laid down by the local government. You don't want to end up paying a big fine because you didn't know you were violating local laws. Finally, now that you're acquainted with the rules and site, it's time to draw up a plan on how exactly you are going to make it profitable to start the quarry. This will involve doing a feasibility study on the location, to see whether it can handle your projected output. Another step is to determine where your initial funding will come from. A business plan is useful since it will guide your initial steps, and can draw investors to the project when it is shown to the right people. Decide whether you want to lease or purchase your equipment. You need equipment, including drills, loaders, excavators and trucks to operate a quarry. Leasing might seem convenient, but it becomes expensive in the long run. Start with used equipment in good condition. When you start making a profit you can upgrade, if possible. Secure the land. When you've got the plan ready and have the money, it's time to secure the location of the quarry. The best way to do this is to buy the land outright. If there are no occupants, then this should be easy. However, this can be expensive. It gets even more costly if you have to relocate people out of the location. The other option to secure the land is to lease it from the landowner. You can choose to pay the owner a flat leasing fee, or sign a contract to share revenue. Talk it out to see which one is best for both sides. Equipment. With the land ready, you are going to need to have the equipment to get the job done. The most apparent pieces are the heavy drillers and trucks. These will be the most expensive to buy. They won't be the only pieces of equipment you need to buy. There are the tools that your miners will use, and machines that you might need in an emergency. For example, an electric submersible pump can be handy when your quarry gets flooded, or you dig into an aquifer. They can ensure that your quarry dries out much quicker. Quarries can be a profitable business that can generate revenue for decades. However, this is only possible if you do it properly. The tips in this video can set you on the right path, but they are just the beginning. If you want to ensure that your business prospers, you need to do some research and get the best people possible to operate your quarry. Marketing. The first step in starting any business should be a detailed analysis of the intended market. Sand and gravel quarrying businesses thrive in areas of rapid development and new housing starts, as long as aggregate companies don't already saturate the market. The best way to determine the feasibility of starting a new company, is to find out what local sand and gravel companies are charging per ton for their aggregate and then compare that to the prices charged in nearby communities. If the cost in your community is substantially higher, there might be room for some competition in your area. Startup Costs Starting a full-service sand and gravel operation that quarries and crushes aggregate, requires a substantial initial investment that could easily run into the hundreds of thousands of dollars, or more. Land acquisition, excavation, extraction, crushing, screening and washing equipment are necessary, in addition to trucks for hauling the material. A delivery-only sand and gravel business has a lower startup cost, which includes dump trucks to haul the aggregate and loaders to load the trucks. 
dump trucks can run anywhere from $40,000 for a pre-owned model, to $130,000 for a brand new truck. Front-end loaders are comparable in price. Delivery-only companies can haul directly from the quarry to the customer, or can purchase large amounts of aggregate and store it at a local distribution site. The next part of the video is not specific to a quarry business. Nevertheless, this knowledge is essential for success in the quarry business, as well as in any other business. Ignore it at your own peril. Operating a successful quarry business will depend on the following four conventions. 1. A practical plan, with a solid foundation. 2. Dedication, and willingness to sacrifice, to reach your goal. 3. Technical skills. 4. Basic knowledge of management, finance, record keeping and market analysis. As a new owner, you will need to master these skills, and techniques, if your business is to be successful. 1. Does your product or service, satisfy an unfilled need? 2. Will your product or service, serve an existing market, in which demand exceeds supply? 3. Will your product or service be competitive, based on its quality, selection, price, or location? Market Analysis For a small business to be successful, the owner must know the market. To learn the market, you must analyze it, a process that takes time and effort. You don't have to be a trained statistician, to analyze the marketplace, nor does the analysis have to be costly. Analyzing the market is a way to gather facts, about potential customers, and to determine the demand for your product or service. The more information you gather, the greater your chances of capturing a segment of the market. Know the market before investing your time and money, in any business venture. The following questions, will help you collect the information necessary to analyze your market, and determine if your product or service will sell. This brief exercise will give you a good idea, of the kind of market planning you need to do. An answer of no. To any of the questions, indicates a weakness in your plan, so do your research, until you can answer each question with a yes. 1. Do you know who your customers will be? 2. Do you understand their needs and desires? 3. Do you know where they live? 4. Will you be offering the kind of products or services, that they will buy? 5. Will your prices be competitive, in quality and value? 6. Will your promotional program be effective? Seven. Do you understand how your business compares with your competitors? 8. Will your business be conveniently located, for the people you plan to serve? 9. Will there be adequate parking facilities, for the people you plan to serve? Planning your startup. The following questions are grouped according to function. They are designed to help you prepare for opening day. Merchandise. Have you decided what items you will sell or produce, or what services you will provide? Have you made a merchandise plan? based upon estimated sales, to determine the amount of inventory you will need to control purchases? Have you found reliable suppliers, who will assist you in the startup? Have you compared the prices, quality, and credit terms, of suppliers? Business records. Are you prepared to maintain complete records, of sales, income and expenses, accounts payable, and receivables? Have you determined how to handle payroll records, tax reports, and payments? Do you know what financial reports, should be prepared, and how to prepare them. Finances. A large number of small businesses, fail each year. There are a number of reasons for these failures, but one of the main reasons is insufficient funds. Too many entrepreneurs, try to start and operate a business, without sufficient capital, money. To avoid this dilemma, you can review your situation by analyzing the following three questions. 1. How much money do you have? 2. How much money will you need to start your business? 3. How much money will you need to stay in business? In order to answer the second question, how much money will you need to start your business? You need to prepare an estimate of all your startup costs. Here is a list of items, you may need to take into account. Note that this list is for a retail business. Items will vary for service, construction, manufacturing or online firms. Decorating and remodeling, fixtures and equipment, installing fixtures and equipment, services and supplies, beginning inventory cost, legal, professional fees, licenses and permits, telephone utility deposits, insurance, signs, advertising for opening, unanticipated expenses. Now, the answer to the third question, how much money will you need to stay in business? Must be divided into two parts, immediate costs, and future costs. From the moment the door to your new business opens, a certain amount of income may come in. However, this income should not be projected in your operating expenses. 
you will need enough money available to cover costs for at least the first three months of operation. The following list will help you project your operating expenses on a monthly basis. Typical expenses for one month may include your living costs, employee wages, rent, advertising, supplies, utilities, insurance, taxes, maintenance, delivery, transportation, miscellaneous. Now sum up the total estimated monthly expenses and multiply it by three. This is the amount of cash you will need to cover operating expenses for three months. Deposit this amount in a savings account before opening your business. Use it only for those purposes listed in the above list because this money will ensure that you will be able to continue in business during the crucial early stages. By adding the total startup costs to the total expenses for three months, you can learn what the estimated costs will be to start and operate your business for three months. By subtracting the totals of the lists from the cash available, you can determine the amount of additional financing you may need, if any. Now you will need to estimate your operating expenses for the first year after startup. The first step in determining your annual expenses is to estimate your sales volume, month by month. Next, determine the cost of sales. You may want to use a spreadsheet to do this. After startup, the primary source of revenue in your business will be from sales, but your sales will vary from month to month because of seasonal patterns and other factors. It is important to determine if your monthly sales will produce enough income to pay each month's bills. An estimated cash flow projection will show if the monthly cash balance is going to be subject to such factors as the following, failure to recognize seasonal trends, excessive cash taken from the business for living expenses, too rapid expansion, and slow collection of accounts if credit is extended to customers. Conclusion If you have carefully answered all the questions in this video, you have seriously thought about your goal. However, there may be some things you may feel you need to know more about. Owning and running a quarry business is a continuous learning process. Research your idea and do as much as you can yourself, but don't hesitate to seek help from people who can tell you what you need to know. As we conclude this video, it's time you get your free quarry business plan gift. Go to the description below this video to get it now. It is completely free, no strings attached. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please like and hit the subscribe button for more videos like this.